Hello, my name is Lane Bader, and this is my E&E 483 scavenger hunt for tutorial two. This is the East Lansing Meridian Township water treatment plant. The thing we were supposed to find there was the Slush Lagoon, which is shown in the middle picture. And that picture is taken of this area right here. Uh, the purpose of a sludge lagoon is to store the waste from water treatment uh, so it can be dried, stabilized, and disinfected for safe disposal. These are some pictures I took in the tower neighborhood of some of the rain gardens I saw. Um, almost every house on the street seemed to have one in front of their house, so that's pretty cool. And the picture in the middle shows, I think it's a community one. So that's also kind of cool. Most of them looked like the one on the right, but that's probably just because it's fall and plants are dying. And so I'm sure they look more like the one on the left in the summer and the spring. The purpose of these rain gardens is to collect rainwater uh, and prevent some of some runoff from the city and all those pollutants uh, to burn that from going into the bodies of water in the area. This is what I'm pretty sure is the constructed wetland at the lodges. I wasn't completely positive I was taking pictures of the correct thing, but I, I think this is it. Uh, anyway, uh, constructed wetlands are cool because it's so it makes it even though it is constructed, uh, it makes it so that uh, water can be collected in a more or and treated in a more natural way and it prevents some it prevents runoff from going into the bigger bodies of water in the area so yeah that's a constructed wetland so these are pictures I took um, not in the botanical garden but just outside of it um, of the buffer between the river and the city of East Lansing and campus itself. Um, the purpose of a buffer is to block and take in some of the runoff before it can get into the red cedar and it mostly just controls the stream environment and it also blocks some of the sunlight so it keeps the temperature down and allows the growth of microorganisms that are helpful to the river and yeah this is the parking lot outside of IM West um, the of the porous asphalt which allows for water to drain into the ground more naturally where it would normally if it were regular asphalt it would pool and run off into the river where we don't want it um, and so it allows the water to sink in as it would if it were on soil and it provides a sort of filter so that it, when the water does eventually reach the red cedar it's cleaner and uh, it would be like it's going through the natural water cycle this is the farm lane bioremediation pond which i did not know we had so it's pretty cool to find out we do have one um, uh, how bioremediation ponds work, it, or this one specifically, is that water, uh, when it rains, is collected at the farm lane underpass and is pumped into this pond where it goes into the settling basin, which allows all the larger particles to settle out, and then it moves on to the vegetative basin, which is all the plants, and that uh, removes some of the excess nutrients that is in this polluted rainwater and then after that it goes into the outflow basin which is where it's pumped back into the natural environment so this is the East Lansing wastewater treatment plant I didn't actually get to see the outfall in person because trying to get to this plant was kind of hard I ended up, as you can see, and over by the restricted area, so I didn't really want to go in, but there's a picture from that side. 
two pictures actually. Um, and but you can see the outfall right here in the picture. Um, and this is just where uh, water from the treatment plant is pumped back into the river after being treated. So these are some pictures I took at the Tollgate Wetlands, which was my favorite place to go. I'll definitely be going back. Um, it was super cool because it was a natural area, but it was also filtering and um, remediating some of the pollution in rainwater and it could just be enjoyed by ducks as you can see in the picture on the or kind of see in the picture on the right but it was a very nice place to visit this slide specifically uh, is for the aeration ph adjustment system which they call the limestone cascades which are shown in the picture on the left and these work to adjust pH and aerate the the water at the very beginning um, and it does so through the limestone it neutralizes some of the acidity of the stormwater and the cascading effects that it goes through aerates and or oxygenates the water which allows uh, pollutants to break down faster and it promotes the growth of helpful microorganisms. This is also at the Tollgate Wetlands, um, but this is for the sedimentation basin or what they call the holding pond. After the water goes through the limestone cascades, it goes through uh, the deadwood forest, which is uh, in the last slide where the ducks were sitting. Um, but the deadwood forest is there to basically provide a habitat uh, for wildlife and it also helps move harmful organics from the water when the trees die and provides food and creates a food chain for all the wildlife in the wetlands so it's a very important part of it but after it goes through there it goes in the water goes through the holding pond or the sedimentation basin which is where large particles are allowed to settle out before the water moves on to the later parts of the wetland. Uh, and last but not least, this is the Lansing Dye Water Treatment Plant, um, which happens to be my first stop. Um, anyway, uh, I think the middle picture shows the storage tanks, which is what we were supposed to find. I looked around a lot and they were the most tank-like thing I could find. So that's what I'm hoping that that picture is of. Um, the picture on the left is just the river, and then the picture on the right is of the sign for the plant. Um, but yeah, the storage tanks hold the water that has been treated. So yeah, that was my scavenger hunt presentation. Thanks.